So today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing and I guess somewhat hypothetical concept of the end of the universe. Or I guess to be more specific, the eventual decay of everything physical in the universe many many years in the future. And in this case this is something that's expected to happen simply because of the way matter behaves. But in this new study we're going to be discussing today, researchers actually recalculated certain assumptions and realized that the universe might decay much sooner than predicted before. And though here we're still talking about enormous timelines, one of the main discoveries in this recent study is just the fact that apparently everything around us, including technically you and I, physically evaporates because of very unusual quantum effects. And so let's discuss this idea in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's just start with the main assumption that was actually proposed by the famous Stephen Hawking. The assumption that technically contradicted Albert Einstein. According to Einstein, at the end of the universe, we should basically only expect black holes. And according to Einstein, black holes should be growing larger and larger over time. But in 1974, Stephen Hawking, based on his studies in quantum physics, realized that even black holes can technically evaporate. And all of this based on a somewhat intriguing principle. The principle behind quantum physics. And the principle kind of related to the idea of quantum foam, a theoretical concept in physics that suggests that everything in the universe always fluctuates. And the entire universe, even when there's nothing there, is filled with these tiny virtual particles always appearing and always disappearing, that then creates this unusual foamy structure. And this quantum foam has been shown to exist in other experiments, so we know that these principles from quantum physics seem to be real. But when applied to a black hole, it actually creates something really bizarre. Right at the edge of the black hole, at the event horizon, this quantum foam potentially creates actual particles. Or basically right at the event horizon, if there's a particle-antiparticle pair, there's always a chance that one of them falls into the black hole not to ever return, with the other particle or antiparticle becoming something physical as a result. And so the result of these particle-antiparticle interactions at the event horizon create what's known as Hawking radiation. Or essentially, all black holes start to create a kind of a glow, with smaller black holes glowing more and more, and at some point possibly even creating objects that become extremely bright although that has never been seen before. And so because of this Hawking radiation, with time, all black holes are expected to evaporate. Or basically just lose their mass over time until there's just nothing left. And NASA website even has this infographic you see right here that essentially shows us how long it would take for a typical black hole to evaporate depending on its mass. And so for example, a black hole with a mass of a Great Pyramid of Giza would take approximately 380,000 years to evaporate. Whereas a blue whale mass black hole would only take approximately 0.41 seconds. And all this being a result of black holes interacting with the quantum effects from the universe itself. But in 2023, several researchers whose paper you can find right here proposed and calculated something entirely different. Here, according to these new calculations, you didn't actually even need to have a black hole event horizon to produce these very bizarre Hawking radiation effects. Or just to rephrase this, according to them, this unusual evaporation also happened around anybody with any mass. In other words, event horizon was not required to create Hawking radiation. And pretty much all objects, even objects with much lower mass, would also produce Hawking radiation, but just maybe not as efficiently. You can learn more about this in a study in the description and also in a video from 2023 in the description below. But in a nutshell, their conclusion was that gravity and the curvature of space-time itself causes Hawking radiation no matter what it is. Once again, it could be a blue whale, the Great Pyramid of Giza, or you and I. So anything that contains mass and anything that creates a kind of a curvature in space-time will also start evaporating over time. But just like with black holes, it would be an extremely slow process. Nevertheless, here in this study, Michael Wondrak and his team definitively show that you can actually create these new particles and drain energy from any object, even far beyond any horizon. And so technically this was not Hawking radiation, but some kind of a new form of radiation that everything around us seems to produce. Although here the radiation would be absolutely minuscule. As a matter of fact, if applied to a human, it would take a typical human body approximately 10 to the power of 90 years to completely evaporate. So basically one followed by 90 zeros, or almost Google years. Google is the word that refers to one followed by 100 zeros. 
Oh, the surprise, no? According to their calculation, even the moon would take just as much. So basically here, both the moon and the human body seems to create these Hawking-like radiation particles at approximately the same rate. Now, obviously though, this is super theoretical because here, most of the particles in our bodies and most of the particles on the moon are actually going to change entirely in the next few billions of years, with many potentially becoming something else and many potentially becoming pure energy. And so here, this is just an assumption based on mass. But in this recent study, they decided to take this idea just a little bit further and decided to calculate how long it would take for most of the objects in the entire universe to completely evaporate, making the universe just pure energy. With the main assumption being that at the end, we really should have things like neutron stars, black holes, and white dwarfs, and possibly nothing else. Now, in some of the previous studies, this number was pretty large. In other words, some of the previous studies established that the universe should evaporate in approximately 10 to the power of 1100 years. So basically one followed by 1100 zeros. But these calculations were based on the idea that white dwarfs evaporate extremely slow and mostly through an unusual process referred to as pycnonuclear fusion. It was actually explored in this study you can find in the description. And we've talked about these black dwarf supernova in one of the videos in the past. But because of this bizarre discovery of a new type of Hawking radiation, in this study researchers realized that even white dwarf seem to evaporate through this process and seem to also produce the same type of radiation. Or in other words, they also produce Hawking radiation and also lose their energy over time in the same way as black holes. And that's despite the fact that they too do not have an event horizon. And so in this study, a black hole expert, a quantum physicist, and a mathematician essentially reworked all of this, confirming that most things in the universe will most likely evaporate within about 10 to the power of 78 years. Something that you can kind of see summarized in this graph. But interestingly, white dwarfs in this case will actually be some of the last survivors. And that's because evaporation time seems to really depend on the density of the object. And surprisingly, both neutron stars and stellar mass black holes will most likely evaporate much, much quicker, within about 10 to the power of 67 years, or about 100 billion times quicker. And that's somewhat unexpected because black holes were always believed to be the last survivors. But because they have a much stronger gravitational field, they seem to evaporate faster. But in most galaxies out there, including the Milky Way, we know that the majority of stars will eventually become white dwarfs. And so it's actually these white dwarfs that are going to be surviving the longest. With most of the black holes and neutron stars already gone, white dwarfs, that by then will technically be black dwarfs because they'll be pretty cold, will still be around for billions and billions of years. Although naturally, as you can see from this graph, supermassive black holes are going to survive even longer, with some of the last remnants being gas, all kinds of dust, and the mysterious dark matter. But in essence, according to this new study, the ultimate end of the universe, or at least the ultimate end for the matter in the universe, seems to arrive much sooner than we previously believed. And though this is obviously still a super, super long time, it is dramatically shorter than previously believed. But despite this being a somewhat hypothetical idea and a discovery that's maybe not very practical, the main achievement in this study is actually combining astrophysics, quantum physics, and mathematics in order to make these new unexpected discoveries. And because all of this only took approximately two years, chances are that in the next five to six years, we'll discover something else entirely different that will once again change our perspective on what's going to be happening to the universe in the far, far future. But since the studies suggest that Hawking radiation seems to be the property of every object, it would be interesting to find out if this is something that could be tested one day and if it can be somehow discovered by directly observing these quantum effects from some kind of an everyday object. Now, because it's so weak and because it's practically invisible, at the moment it's still basically impossible. But I'm sure someone will come up with something in the next few years. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.